I've let him at 18 years of age utilize what he could use, which is his ability to go out of the house and be on his own. I've let him do it. But doesn't mean that I'm still not working 99% of the way. Does that make sense to people? It's all on you. And then, as I just mentioned, it's all about them. Not about you yet. It's all on you and it's all about them. Step one and two of a co-elevating relationship. Step number three is that when at some point is the right time and you say to that person, what do you want your dreams and goals to be? Now, in the back of your head, you're like, wait a second, what about me? When did they start worrying about my dreams and goals? Not yet. You say to them, what do you want your dreams and goals to be? Daniel wants to be a rapper. Okay, I've met Q, I've met Quincy before. Maybe I can go get some connection there, make some introductions. I showed up and started going to rap like things, which is not, I like country music. I'm from Pittsburgh, right? I'm definitely not a rap guy. But I started showing up at rap things and I showed this really cool dreadhead, dreadlocked, cool dude. And, uh, and he's like chilling with my son. I'm like, wow, that's great. I went up to him and said, what are you doing? He's like, I'm a rapper. I'm like, what do you make money from? He's like, Uber. I'm like, cool, cool. I said, how'd you like to move in for a year and, and be my son's rap coach? And it did. I mean, we walked, we went around the world together with this little African-American Mexican kid, myself, my Asian fiance, and this dreadlock rapper. I'm sure people watched us get off a plane and were like, what a lovely family. But at the end of the day, I went 99.9% .9 of the way. And here's what I said, Daniel, I want you to be a great rapper. I'm going to invest in that. And by the way, Daniel, there's some things I do that I can maybe teach you because I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. And some of those mistakes are this, this, and this. Here's the thing I'm not doing well as an entrepreneur and da, 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 da. So I went on a humble shared journey of development with my co-elevation partner that didn't even know he was a co-elevation partner. I started revealing myself of my frailties, my humility, right? Because at the end of the day, we're all just in the journey. Because that's what approaches us and makes us willing to have you listen to us. The good ones of us know that if we don't share where we're struggling, then you will know we're not telling you the truth. And that's what you need to do in your co-elevation partnerships. Go on a shared, humble journey and start leading with that vulnerability and maybe they'll start cracking open and the very things that have been pissing you off might be the things that they then share to you and say, like Daniel did one day when I came home and I said, Daniel, oh, geez, I did a stupid thing at work today. I got upset because sometimes when I start having struggles in the workplace. I used to have a temper and I don't anymore. I've worked that out. And the reason I used to is because I have a scarcity mindset, unfortunately, not a growth mindset at the core. And I'm working on a growth mindset. And I, because I've always been poor, when little things happen, I see 20 dominoes fall in my head. And at the end of it is me not paying rent. I got upset and I screwed something up that is going to take me two months to, to, to before this person is going to trust me again. And he stopped playing his video games. And he said, I do that too. And we had probably one of the best conversations we've ever had, right? Um, we've got to open ourselves up to be on the journey with our people. Next thing and the last thing, and I'm out of time. I wish I could spend a lot more time with you, um, is candor is your key. Transparency, honesty, openness, no conflict avoidance. You got to have an agreement with this person. 